and and I guess in those early days, because um, we see you now as a producer, you know, doing beyond production and and, and singing, uh, mm. and then you said you were doing things solo. What was it that? How did you learn the the production and writing side? Was that stuff with, that was always within the family, or how did you you particularly learn your your style of writing and, and producing? Um, I mean, I always like me and Devontae always wrote songs. Like we wrote songs as kids. Like we was right anything we thought of. Like we had a song called "Just Share." I remember one time my brother had he had some chicken or something. And I, was, and I was like, "Man, just give me something." He wanted to give me his chicken. I, mean, I wrote a song called "Just Share," and it was like we write his stupid songs. You know, one of them was "Get a Whooping by Our Parents," and I made a song called 40 Lashes." It was like, <laughs> it was, we just write silly songs, but actually, some of the melodies we actually kept and used as real songs. So it's like you know we were right all the time. And, you know, we never thought nothing of it. Like when Devontae wrote, come and talk to me, the first time I heard it, I think he was 16 years old and he played it for me. I was like, you know, and this before I even thought about doing Jodeci. It was like, he had wrote this song. And I was like, man, I was like, this song should be on the radio. And he was just, it was a song he wrote. I mean, he gave it to him in cassette tape. And I kept listening to it, listening to it. I was like, this is something. And I was like, man, this is something. You know, it, it was, it was come and talk to me and it had a girl singing on it. Then he put Jojo on it first and it was KC on it. And it's, it just kind of grew into what it is now. But it was just a song he had made. He would write songs like that all the time. And, you know, if if he dug back in his catalog of songs, I mean, he could, he could, you know, we could actually make songs forever. But, you know, a lot of those songs ended up on Five My Lady album. They were just songs that he had just made up on the fly. And, uh, you know, you know, from then on, it was Five My Lady, then The Diary of the Mad Band, Diary of the Mad Band, and uh, The Show Down the Part in the Hotel. But a lot of those songs came back from Five My Lady days that we wrote when we was teenagers. Wow. You know, Love you for life was written the same time forever my lady was written you know so so uh you know that's how that went though and yeah. me as far i always wrote you know but me just being around my brother and just learning and him guiding me on how to do it as far as like my production with it and everything uh it, it's i just kind of took it more serious as time went on you know oh so those early days and and i wonder how it's like having an older brother that's extremely talented like that does it mean that you does it, does it limit how you brought your stuff? Did you think, no, I can't bring my songs because of that? Or how was it for you? When we fought, we fight so much in the studio. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah. we, 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 we argue so much in the studio. Like, get on up. He hated get on up. <laughs> He's like, he hated it. But I was like, you know. I was like, man, I'm telling you. So we went back and forth and back and forth. And he he bring me a song. And he had, what do you think about this? And I was like, I don't like the drum. Give me one second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you call Justin? Um, yeah. So, you know, he will bring me a song and be like, well, what do you think about the drums on this? I'm like, I, uh, I don't like this. And he had, he had exactly what I tell him. He had to do the opposite. Just, you know, just, I mean, that's just how he is. But, but I have to always credit my brother for telling me this. When we first moved to New York, um, I will always, we moved to the projects in the Bronx and I will always go play basketball every day and every single day, every day, every day. And he told me one time, he said, listen, he said, what you need to do is you didn't get paid to go out there to that park and play basketball. You better pick up this drum machine and spend as much time on this drum machine and writing these songs and this keyboard as you're doing a basketball court because this is going to keep you paid for the rest of your life. And that's what he told me that always stood out of my head. And I was like, you're absolutely right. He said, you don't get paid to do that, but this is what you get paid for. Wow. And he told me, I was like, that was like, I always remember that he told me that. And I was like, you know what? This is much time as I spend for things that I don't get paid for. I better spend time for the things that's going to support me for the rest of my life. So, yeah, one good bit of advice he told me. You know, and, and I think that's 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 an interesting thing. Um, you know, having a very talented older brother who could, who could look out, out for you. Because as we said, we're going to get to your, your solo stuff uh, now. And it's funny, a lot of people did like... I actually did like Get On Up um, because it was different you know right. it had a different type of stuff so I do remember looking out for some of the things that you were writing and producing because it had a very different vibe um, mm -hmm. it, it, was it a hard decision when they said they're going to New York while you were still tr getting a little exposure back in North Carolina uh, as your own Bobby Brown <laughs> and, it, and if, if, if the story be told correctly if you ever do an interview Casey and Jojo and my brother Devontae Ask him who's got it, brought all the girls around. I had all the fans. Like, I was a celebrity in North Carolina. So, like, you know, I said, I have my own little fan base. So, you know, we go to New York. I didn't know anybody. I was just right back in the beginning. No, 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 no female fans, nobody, nothing. I'm in the projects with, with these four and three other guys by myself starting all over. But 
you know, it was cool. So it wasn't a hard transition because I knew like in my life, it was some bigger, it was a bigger purpose. And my brother always was a great visionary. So I was like, I'm just gonna follow your lead, you know, and, and let it be what it is. So I felt that, you know, me following him and like Casey and Jojo, we both follow him because he had a plan laid out. And I thought that was the best option for me at the time. Yeah. It, it, when, when he did meet Casey, and, what was your impression of Casey and Jojo when you when you met them? It was all bad, man. I've told this story many times. Now, if you don't know the story, you got to wait till the movie come out. You got to <laughs> wait. You, you know, the first issue meeting of Casey and Jojo, it was all bad. But if you don't know it, you got to wait. You got to wait. I got to make it. Okay, okay, okay. The um, I, I interviewed Tony Terry, um, and he said that when he was um, he he got you guys to help sing on a remix of his song, but he only paid you guys fifty dollars and uh, a Wakiki chicken dinner. Do you remember that? That must have been Casey and Jojo. I would never do that. Maybe okay. Papa not Kiki chicken. Nah. nah okay. <laughs> But I, do you I remember know. singing with Tony Terry on, on a remix of? He's a great artist. I mean, I've met him, I think, back in the, I want to say, early 90s. Early I 90s, never, yeah. I never worked with Tony Terry. Maybe okay. Casey. Okay, so maybe he got the, the other guys. Is, when, 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 when they're recording for My Lady, did, did you try and get involved with the writing production? Or what was, it, what was your thoughts about how much input you could put on the um, album? Read the credits on the back of it, my lady album. It says additional production by Mr. Dalvin. I mean, I, I did a lot of work on that album, but you know, Devontae is the main producer, so obviously he deserves the the the, the, the lion's share of the credit. But um, you know, yeah, I mean, I produced on like on uh Stay, I did you know I programmed the drums on Stay, uh, you and I, uh, you know, I did like uh a lot of work on Fell My Lady. We all did actually, but you know, I did a production work on that, so yeah, you know. But I, I have to stand out a little more and, you know, stand on my own on the next album and then the very next album, it was just a little more every time. Yeah. You know, so I think that uh, they trusted me and me to just stand out and not, you know, be overshadowed by Devontae's production, let me stand on my own and do my own thing, so. What, what was it, I mean, I mean, you're, you're in the studio now and, and I've seen you in the studios, but back in those early days, you know, you're learning the production and drum machine how was the transition being in a studio with all the sort of mixing keys and understanding how to be a producer within in a, in a massive studio? Um, well, you know, my dad is a recording artist. He's, he's like, my dad has had like 17 gospel albums. So we were always in the oh. we, we We were familiar with the studio, you know, already. We spent most of our life, our early childhood in the studio with my dad, you know, watching him record, watching him how he arranged harmony, stack harmony and, you know, arranged music. So it kind of, it came kind of natural. We just had to learn our way without him being there. You know, and just finally they, you know, when Uptown Records put us in the studio, it was like, you know, we they just put us in a, a candy shop and say, okay, here it is. Make some magic happen. You know, so, and we just, we was in there. We wasn't strangers to the studio, you know, so it came kind of natural. It wasn't like it was totally in the studio, you know. Okay, because you now I talk to a lot of artists who sing natural, and then when they get into the studio, they realize, wow, this is not the same. I mean, having to record your voice and constantly playing back, and and it's the whole experience is different from right. just being singing in church. Right. Um, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.